Good morning, Facebook! I figured I'd start off with a finger point today! Uh, fun fact! <clears throat> Woo! Today actually um, marks six years of me being in radio. I started on the radio September 19th, 2011, and I was going to get on air and, you know, and uh, talk about that briefly and be like, you know, thank you for listening, thank you for letting me do what I do, um, because honestly, without you listening, I don't have a job, uh, but I, I didn't actually have time to get to that. We got so much going on this morning, we're doing so much stuff. I figured, you know, nobody really wants to hear me talk about the fact that I've, you know, been working for six years, like, who cares? So I'll say that here, because I do have the time. So thank you, uh, as always. And now, let us dish, let us partake of Billy's Bowl. That always makes me laugh. All right, let's do this. For the past 35 years, 8675309 Jenny has been the highest charting song with a phone number in its title after peaking at number four on the Hot 100 in 1982. But that all changed this week when a new phone number song surpassed it. Can you guess what it is? Heck, you may not even know the name of the song since he never actually says the number once in the actual song itself, but I'm sure you've heard it. 1-800-273-8255 by Logic with Alessia Cara and Khalid. It's the number of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and 8255 is actually the dial code for talk. Uh, if 1-800-273-TALK helps you remember it more easily. The song jumped from number five last week to number three this week, and while it's not as easy to say as 8675309, certainly not as catchy, practically speaking, it could end up uh, being way more beneficial to society as a whole. Now that the authorities have been alerted to an extortion attempt on Kevin Hart, they're working hard to identify the people in the video that's at the center of this cheating scandal so they can trace it back to the extortionist. One woman has been identified as Montia Sabag, a 27-year-old traveling stripper who basically books freelance gigs at whatever club she can hit up. She allegedly met Kevin during a weekend in Vegas back in August but didn't have any contact with him before or since. She can be seen in the first frames canoodling with Kevin in this video, and purportedly she and Kevin wander around in various stages of undress later in the video. I haven't seen it, uh, though none of the identities in the latter portion are confirmed. Montia denies being involved, but here's the kicker. After Kevin contacted her, she agreed to take a lie detector test if he pays her $420,000. I'm not sure in what kind of reality that could possibly be beneficial to Kevin, although I suppose at this point it's less about covering up his cheating scandal and more about catching the extortionist who allegedly tried to squeeze him for upwards of $10 million. And if he can do that for four hundred twenty grand, I guess that's a substantially smaller price to pay. And speaking of prices to pay, Taylor Swift is being sued for stealing lyrics of her song Shake It Off from two guys named Sean Hall and Nathan Butler. They wrote a song called Play Is Gone Play back in 2001 for a group called 3LW, which featured the line, Play Is They Gonna Play and Haters They Gonna Hate. Uh, they're saying Taylor stole that line with her catchy refrain from Shake It Off. Keep in mind, this Play Is Gone Play song peaked at number 81 on the Hot 100, so it wasn't exactly a massive hit. Taylor's legal team says they don't have a case, but what makes this funny is that if you have any knowledge of turn-of-the-century Disney Channel original movies, you may know that two of the three girls in 3LW were in the Cheetah Girls. So it's almost like half of the Cheetah Girls are suing Taylor Swift. Not exactly, because they're not the ones, you know, putting forth the lawsuit. It's the writers of the song, but still. And if that wasn't funny enough, why now? Like, what makes this an opportune time to sue over lyrics of a song that peaked in popularity over three years ago? It's not like they're just discovering Shake It Off for the first time. I swear, these copyright infringement lawsuits just pop up at random. Billy the Kid in the morning, next. Yeah, what, what a bizarre, like, you'll see people suing over songs that came out years ago. I just don't get, like, if you were gonna, if you're gonna try and make a cash grab, like... It's somebody for something that you, maybe it took them that long to say, hey, hey, you know what? We could probably squeeze some money out of Taylor for this. That's the only thing that I can think of. Um, but anyway, as I was saying before we got started with the live stream, um, thank you for listening to the show. If you do, when you do, maybe you only come to Facebook. And if that's the case, that's totally cool. I appreciate you watching. Um, but if you do listen to the show, thank you very much because I love my job and I don't know what I would do otherwise because um, 
you know, making bad jokes about celebrities and then like breaking rules on purpose for the entertainment of people. It's those are kind of niche skills. They're not really marketable. So um, I really appreciate being able to do this every day. And speaking of doing this, um, we're going to be doing more stuff, giving more stuff away. That's one of the best things about radio, right? This is free stuff you can win. So we have a free MacBook Pro. You can get qualified. We'll be giving away uh, the MacBook at the end of this week. We'll be announcing the grand prize winner, 440 Friday afternoon with Scott Pank. But another chance to get qualified is coming up in about six minutes, 746 Mac to school. We got tickets to see Mike Epps at the Palace October 6th. I'll be giving those away after 8.40. And then another chance at Mac to school coming up during the high five at 9. It's like between 9.05 and 9.15. That's, you know, it's a variable because I can't, um, you know, high five at 9, most requested songs in the morning. I can't predict exactly what songs are going to be the most requested until the time comes. So depending on the length of the songs is when we're going to be doing the contest. Somewhere in between 9.05 and 9.15, Mac to school. And then, of course, we got the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show on the way in less than three hours, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time Sharp, because as we always say on the show, Eastern Time is the only time zone that matters. If you're watching from another time zone, then it's either really early or really late, and I'm sorry, because that's... That's the wrong time. But anyway, thanks again, and we'll catch you either for the contest or for the cubicle show. Until then, peace be with you.